We are live on the Rutgers Football Channel for the huge win for Rutgers over Wagner, 52-3. to It's so huge that both Richie and Mike just couldn't make it because their excitement was just too much, and they're partying outside of the stadium right now as we speak. Uh, obviously, that is not anywhere near the truth. Fact is, uh, Richie was going to make it. Just couldn't do it. Uh, he was just a little bit too tied up. And uh, I don't blame him uh, because this was just one of those games that uh, Rutgers needed to win. They needed to win big, and they did it. And so, uh, really, it is what it is. Uh, it's a much-needed win, though. It counts. Uh, the team is now two wins away from uh, bowl eligibility. Uh, and I guess the question is, do you believe – that uh, this team, from what you've seen, you know, last week's first loss and this week's win over a high school team has what it takes uh, to become bowl eligible. So that's the big question. I'm not sure how long we're going to be on the air live here. You know, maybe we'll give it about 15 minutes to a half hour, depending on how many uh, viewers we have. We already see some of the uh, chats are starting up, which is nice to see. Not as much as uh, when Rutgers takes on FBS opponents. But uh, we thank everybody for joining us here. Don't forget, you've got the thanks icon. Uh, also, you can uh, not only, of course, uh, donate to the show, but obviously just a simple subscribe to the show and uh, share the video. All that stuff very important here on the Rutgers Football Channel. Just a couple of days ago, the boys uh, did a, a preview, a practice preview on this channel. Uh, for the basketball team. So the basketball team is uh, getting ready to kick things off soon, or I should say tip things off soon. So we're all excited about that. But this is about Rutgers football team. And uh, for this report, like I said, this is just about, you know, what did you think about their performance today? Was it good enough? Uh, we got to keep in mind that we can't expect them to really come out firing on all cylinders emotionally, psychologically, and all that. Um, but still, there were things that you, you, you just want to see a little bit better, especially Gavin. There were a couple of throws down the field. I think you guys uh, saw the two long passes to Jackson. Neither one was complete. He overthrew him on, uh, on the first one, and he underthrew him on the second one. Now, if he hits him in stride on both, you're talking about two 60-yard touchdown passes, at least, I think, right? So that's something that has to be cleaned up. Uh, you know, I, he, he had that one big completion earlier this season. That's nice, but that's just, he's got to do a better job. He's got to be a little bit more consistent still. He's light years ahead of where he was last year. There's no question about it. And uh, he, he's only going to go so far this year, but that's something that he needs to clean up because teams are going to play Rutgers to stop the run, uh, they know Rutgers is not a deep passing team. And so the important thing that uh, Wimzad is going to have to do, you know, maybe this is something that whether he works on it the rest of this season or he's going to have to work on it for next season, the fact is if, if he's going to become more of a complete college quarterback, he's going to have to complete those passes down the field. He's going to have to scare the defense a little bit into thinking that there's the opportunity for the big play. Uh, but other than that, uh, Rutgers pretty much did what they wanted to. They had a few penalties. Uh, you don't really want to see that, but it wasn't too excessive. They had you know, the special teams. That's not good. Though Rochelle did come back and almost kicked, uh, almost uh, brought that to the house on the kick return, which would have been nice to see because he's had a very tough start. But as we said, um, it looks like Shiano's going to stick with them. And I do believe he's getting more confident we, you know, as we're going along here. And he's a young kid, and I can see Shiano saying to himself, this is the guy for the – this is his spot. You know, we're going to eventually get him next year. Try, we're going to try to find different ways offensively to get Rochelle going. But until then, this is what he's going to have to work on this year, and he can be a big part of our special teams for the next couple of years. So it was nice to see him – uh, bring that one almost to the house. Of course, his punt returns have got to be a little bit more uh, electrifying than uh, fair. I mean, how many has he had? I don't even know how many times. Maybe you guys know how many times he's actually returned punts. Uh, it's, it's been at least 80 to 90 percent on the fair catches. But uh, you can see I'm, I'm I'm grasping for straws here 
uh, on uh, how to uh, how to make uh, uh, Rochelle uh, a bigger part of this offense. But it was nice uh, to see several other players that we haven't really seen a whole lot of this year make plays. Uh, we had also uh, some other highlight plays that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So keep the chats coming. I'm by myself, so it's me and you guys. Also want to let you know, let you guys know that if you don't already know it, I have my own channel on Prime Sports Network. It's the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel. So I'm a Jet fan. I don't know how many Rutgers Jet fans are out there. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, Rutgers anti-Zach uh, Wilson Jet fans. So you probably don't like uh, the video. You probably won't like the videos I put out because I'm actually uh, one of the very few if only maybe the less remaining defenders of Zach Wilson. <laughs> Not that I think he's done great, but I think uh, the Jets have got to figure out a way to be a lot better football team. And uh, so if you, if, you want, if you want to find out what I talk about with the New York Jets, check out the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel. We also have a weekly college football preview show every Thursday with Mark Lawrence. He is a legendary handicapper from Las Vegas. So check that out. Uh, Mark has his own channel, Prime. Uh, it's actually called Playbook Experts. I produce that show. They got legendary handicappers like Jim Feist. So if you're into that thing, check that out. Um, these guys really know what they're talking about. They go back a long ways. And again, handicapping college football and talking about the game every Thursday on Prime Sports Network. Let's talk Rutgers football. Let's uh, recap the game from the start. And again, I'm going to try to do my best uh, to check out uh, the chat and P Matt, uh, Poisset and, uh, Matt, uh, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Is it Matt, a Poisset? Uh, anyway, Matt, I believe has donated every week to the channel, a dollar 99. We appreciate it, Matt. And, uh, Eric Smith, by the way, I a hundred percent agree. And I think we all agree with you. Nice to see Reggie Sutton playing. And we'll talk about that and bring that up. But my, I mean, this is a good time to bring it up. Absolutely. By the way, P Matt, uh, did, uh, uh, comment yes i believe rutgers has enough to win two more but perhaps not more than that so uh he also said thanks again for being here and i appreciate uh i do appreciate being here and i'm glad you uh, appreciate me being here as well um so let's take a look at how the game went chronologically so rutgers gets off to a three nothing lead on the field goal the 44 yard field goal i didn't really like the third and nine call i'm not even sure what that was we've seen this call before I don't know what this call is, but we've seen it before. There's like the third time I've seen this call. And every time I've seen it, it hasn't gone anywhere. I mean, I, I mean, I guess. Now, maybe, maybe, when it, maybe it looks a whole lot better when maybe the call has been made more, but it just looks bad a few times. But they get into these third and long situations, or at least, again, I remember this a couple times. As a matter of fact, we talked about this two weeks ago when they, they did the same thing. It's like third and long, and Wimzat just holds the ball like a wildcat run. And he doesn't get anywhere, and then he just settles for the field goal. It's like, that's the design. Don't turn the ball over. Let's send our young place kicker out there early in the game just to get him going, just to see where he's at. I, that's the only thing I can guess of why they call these plays, because I specifically remember the same call and the same nothing result that's that that basically resulted in the field goal and at least it was a good one Rutgers went up three nothing now the next drive and this this is a good one for Richie and the boys especially Richie um and hopefully he'll talk about uh, some of the players that came out and 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 made a name for themselves for the very first time I'm going to try to see if I can pop up the actual yardage matter of fact i'm going to move this over here so you guys can see exactly what i'm seeing as we're, as i talk there it is all right so there is here here, here are some of the guys that we have, we've never heard of well we've never seen before yet so jesse a fury now a fury made a nice little catch there early in the game that was a seven yard catch and, and this is somebody that i i've never really heard of before so I'm sure Richie will bring him up. Nice to see him going one for one on uh, on that reception. So that was one of them. A little bit uh, now that was after the field goal drive, and on third and goal, this was the very next possession because I believe Rutgers scored on every possession. Am I correct with that? 
I believe they they never punted, and they were what five for five on fourth downs. They were very lucky to be five for five. It looked like they were going to be four for five, and they got the second chance, five for five touchdown. Let's later on, but they had a third and goal, and this is what I want to talk about. Um, this was before the touchdown. They had third and goal after the three nothing lead, and I don't really. Un- Wimzat's back there, and he has like all day. I mean, he's standing in the pocket. There is nobody around him. I mean, I I, I, I can't imagine he doesn't know this. And he just decides, I'm going to throw it away, kind of. He's like, all right, the guy's covered. I'm going to just kind of throw it away. I was a little bit surprised by that. But the only thing that I can think of is, is this is what they're coaching him. It doesn't matter if it's Wagner. It doesn't matter if it's Michigan. In that situation, you're in the pocket, the clock. You got to have that clock, the mental clock. Just get rid of the ball. I mean, against Wagner, I don't know. I just would have, maybe I'm being spoiled here. I would have liked to have seen him just make a play. Just don't throw the ball away because I I thought they were going to go for the field goal. And all of a sudden, that's that's what I was believing at the time. So I'm glad at least they went for it uh, on fourth down. Maybe again, that's exactly what he knew. They knew he knew where they were going to go for it. So I was probably just uh, getting a little out of hand with criticizing him there for that one. Anyway, the fact is, Dremel had the big touchdown catch, big, and it went up 10 0. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, this uh, route started to open up. And Dremel was four for 38 for a touchdown. And, you know, the Rutgers receivers, I don't know what you guys think, but it's. It's starting to look pretty good for the future. Now, I, w- I don't know. Now, Jackson, I don't remember. You guys know how long Jackson, if he has another year of el- eligibility left. Anybody know if Jackson has another year of eligibility left? Because it would be nice to see him here next year. Because Strong, who had that really awesome uh, uh, catch a little bit later in the game, you know he's only going to get better. You know Dremel's only going to get better. So this is a you know a, a really interesting receiving core that has a lot of future potential, and it it it'd be nice if Gavin can grow with these guys and and start becoming a, a lot more of a consistent quarterback by next season, because I think he's going to have the weapons for it. Uh, so it's nice to see. Um, and Dremel, I mean, I, I really didn't think that Christian Dremel was going to be this good. I just didn't. I just thought, well, he, here's a kid that has done a great job, uh, you know, lunch pail kind of player, gets on the team. And I kind of figured, all right, well, that's probably, maybe he's only starting or considered a starter at Rutgers because this is Rutgers and they have no receiving options. Not the case. And this kid is is only, what, a sophomore? You know, he's got an opportunity to be a really good one. I mean, I'm talking, of course, he doesn't have the size to be a top NFL prospect. But I'm just talking about a really good college football player by the time he graduates and the type of player that could be draftable. I'm talking in the later rounds, but a player, if he continues the route running, the hands, all of that, I can see him actually becoming uh, a player uh, that Rutgers can see representing them in the, in the NFL when his career is all said and done. So really happy. And, and again, keep this in mind with Jackson. Overall, he had four receptions for 71 yards. He could have had six receptions for 200 yards. You know, when you're watching, when you take a look at college box scores, and you see some of these guys in these uh, wide open games, and you take a look at the box scores. You see some of these receivers with these like crazy numbers. Washington is for one, and you see these guys, and they're like you know five for one eighty and two touchdowns. You're like, oh, you know, that's nice. It's, Rutgers doesn't usually get that, but that could have actually been Rutgers. That could have been Jackson today. Had uh, Wims at him on both of those uh, long passes. So again, really nice to see uh, Division Two player. And um, all American, of course, but Division Two, and uh, all of a sudden Rutgers has a pretty good pair of receivers. So Rutgers goes up ten nothing, and then they have the onside kick. What do you guys think about the onside kick? So Dremel, because I'm looking here, I guess I'm using uh, Phil Steele's, and he's got him as a sophomore. 
So you're saying Dremel's a senior. How many more years of eligibility does he have at least? Does he does he have at least a couple of years left of eligibility? What's his situation? So he's a senior. So Phil Steele uh, screwed up. Does he have at least one more year of eligibility left? Yeah, you see Dremel, it's too bad. Take It, it took him uh, th this long, but I hope he's, does he have one more year left? I hope he has another year left. Because if he has another year left, uh, Rutgers can definitely use that. Because if Jackson and Dremel, are, are both of them gone? Okay, Dremel has one more season. Thanks to him, man. So at least Dremel has one more season. It sucks to see Jackson gone. But you would think that Strong, if he keeps this going, could kind of fill the Jackson role, even though they're probably a little bit different in what they do. Um, and then you just got to hope that there's someone else that picks up that role, whether it's a transfer or another young player. And I'm not sure if they've got the kid on the team. I mean, Ture had a, had a nice catch. I believe that was in the fourth quarter on the last drive. So uh, they do have some young kids to keep an eye on. Um, and uh, good to know at least that Dremel will be back for one more year. Okay, so what would you guys think about the onside kick? You, you guys, uh, PMAT, yeah, you disliked it. I didn't – look, I, I don't know what you disliked about it. I think if you're going to practice it, if they practiced it, if that was a, a call by the coaching staff, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the coaching staff tells the, 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 the kickers if they want to do something, they've got the green light. Right? So we'll find out. Sure, Shiano, I, I would guess they'd ask him about whether or not he had the green light on that. If, um, I know it's Wagner, but again, like I said, if you're going to practice it, you practice it against Wagner, uh, but you better make it. Because the thing was, if the ball would have reached 10 yards, it ends up being a, a gun onside kick and Rutgers takes over. But that's why I guess you practice your onside kicks. All right. Max Melton was uh, called for pass interference again. And this is really disturbing because Max Melton getting called for, I guess it was pass interference or he was a 15-yard penalty. I don't know what it was, pass interference or what exactly. Yeah, I guess it was pass interference. Why does he need to pass interference against a, a player from Wagner? So it continues to be like a really just strange season for Max Melton. Um, didn't matter anyway because Wagner missed the field goal on that drive. So then we had what I want to call the Sam Brown is back drive. So Sam Brown gets his one big drive and uh, he, will, he basically he goes 9 of 38 for a touchdown. And he gets the the, the, uh, the touchdown, one-yard touchdown run on that drive. They go up 17-0. By the way, that was the one uh, where Jackson uh, could have had the 65-yard touchdown pass I was talking about. Um, and he made just a, a really great diving uh, catch on that one. So I think that went to that went for 41. So he makes the diving catch. So again, even though it could have been longer, fact was it was a great catch by Jackson. That sets up the Brown run. But besides the big 41-yard catch by Jackson, it was really all Brown. And that was nice to see. And did you notice on a few plays how Brown was just carrying guys and how he was moving forward just about every time he had the ball and every time he, uh, he, he went up against uh, the, def the defenders? That's what kind of what we talked about last week is that it would it, it, it would be really nice to have Brown now. I certainly hope starting now, it's about time. Let's let's get him out. Big game situations, because every game is now a big game the rest of the season. Trying to get that six wins. You get in short yarded situations, Sam Brown needs to be the guy. Okay, you Manungai has been incredible this year, but Short yarded situations, please get Samuel Brown out there. Uh, he is the perfect guy uh, for short yarded situations. Anyways, great to see Brown on that drive, and uh, he got the job done. You know, I do want to mention this. How many of you guys, as Rutgers fans, how many of you guys are really tired of seeing the network that covers Rutgers bring up the fact that the first college football game was at Rutgers. 
you know, it's it to me, it's similar as a Jet fan to every time I got to hear about Joe Namath and the Jets in that season. As much as I love Joe Namath and as much as I, I praise him for uh, giving us an identity in a Super Bowl, it's just it's like, man, can we do we have anything else? And but at least we have that as a Jet fan for Rutgers. That's like, yeah, that's the one thing we do have. Isn't that neat? Is that we, first college football game? You know, that's that's awesome. That says something. That's really nice. But the fact that that's the thing they keep bringing up all the time is because Rutgers football hasn't really done anything since then. And that's kind of the thing that's bothersome, of course, because once the program starts having some sort of actual success, like make a playoff or something in the next few years, um, obviously because they'll be doing – what, 12 teams next year, and, and, and who knows, maybe they'll go to 16 in a few years. So get to that step, and then who knows what's after that. But it's just, for me, it's like, come on, man. I mean, every single week, every network that has Rutgers, especially if it's a new one, has to bring up that Rutgers. And then they bring all the stats up, and it's like, whatever, man. Yes, we know they were the first. I mean, I would, I would even think that most fans that are not Rutgers fans knows, knows this fact by now. Okay. Now, Wagner had a fourth and one on their own 27, and they went for it. It looked like they were able to pick it up. They reversed the call, and that led to a whimsat five-yard touchdown run, and Rutgers goes up 24-0. So Rutgers gets another break by the reps. And, and look, outside of Michigan, every game that they played at home, Rutgers has pretty much gotten breaks from the officials. So they got a break again. I don't think they even deserved it. They were lucky. But anyway, uh, they took advantage of it to go up 24 nothing. Then they gave up the long kick return to the Rutgers 24, and that led to their only points of the game, 24-3. Can't happen. Can't give up a long kick return from Wagner. So how about the Rutgers two-minute offense? I don't know what you guys thought about the Rutgers two-minute offense. Sack minus seven yards, run minus four, and then run out the clock. That's pretty weak. So an opportunity to go out there, you practice. Now, some, some teams don't, um, I, but most teams do. They practice a two-minute offense. And here's your, here's your opportunity to practice the two-minute offense against Wagner. And that was terrible. That's why I said at the beginning, this was not – there were – this really wasn't that pretty, to tell you the truth. It was you did what you had to do, but there were a lot of things that Rutgers could have done better. Second half, Rochelle has the 88-yard kick return to the Wagner 7. That leads to the whims that touchdown run. And Gavin has done a really good job in those situations when he rolls out, forces the defender to make the decision. So in the future, maybe the, d the defenders will peel off their receiver. That'll leave guys open. But fact is, Gavin's doing a really good job of that. And... uh that was what I believe that, that led to uh, a couple of touchdown runs overall for Wimsat. So uh, he's really piling up those touchdown runs this year. Then you had after the 31 three lead at that point, you had a really uh, great catch by Ian strong. That was that uh, really nice play gets that one, one uh, gets, gets his one foot in. That's the second big catch he's made this year. And it's just, I don't know. It's just weird. It's like you, we never see the kid. And then when we do, he makes these like really big catches. So I don't know why he doesn't get more playing time, but okay, whatever. So, and then they go up five for five on the fourth downs on the Menungai touchdown run to go up 38 to three. Again, maybe got a little bit lucky. It was four for five that it wasn't four for five because the Wagner kid went off sides. And then came the underthrow, excuse me, the overthrow. I think there was the overthrow. No, it was the underthrow. To Jackson, which this one could have been another big play. Um, there was a flag on the play anyway, because it was on the throne. And this was the drive, I believe, that Reggie Sutton came out. And that was really awesome. How awesome was that? So now the question is, was Reggie Sutton, was he, was he just put out there against Wagner because Coach figured, all right, I'll put you out against a high school team because I know you're not going to get hurt or your chances of getting hurt are pretty slim. So this is when I'm going to play you. I don't know. I mean, is that it? Is that what we see out of uh, out of um, Sutton this year? 
I don't know. But that was awesome. It was nice to see. So if he only had one more, one more place to go as far as a Rutgers football player, which I would guess if Rutgers goes to a bowl this season, he'll get a chance. I don't think there's any doubt about that. If Rutgers goes to a bowl game this year, you will see him out there at some point on the football field. Um, Benjamin scores a touchdown on that drive. They go up 45-3. Shepard comes out and goes two for two, uh, runs for 10 yards, and on the drive, this was the Aaron Young drive, and he scores a touchdown, and Rutgers wins. They go up 52-3 with just a few seconds left in the game. So there you go. Rutgers goes to 4-1 and one with the win against... Mighty Wagner. Do we play Wagner this year? next year, do you know? Is this like a yearly thing? We all certainly hope not. I mean, I can understand in a way why Coach is, is, is putting these. I know it's years ahead, but where Rutgers is right now, they really need these really cinchy wins. What they can't afford is to play like a really good FCS team right now. Because if they play a really good FCS team right now, they may, they may lose it. And we've seen that kind of stuff before. So I'm I'm okay with what with the development of the program right now. Just get the win. Uh, that helps us with the six. But at some point in the next year or two, uh, we need to uh, rid ourselves of, of the Wagners. Uh, and uh, and 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 when you play an FCS team, just nobody's saying that you have to play some juggernaut, but a little bit better competition would would be nice. Um, so next week. Rutgers will be in Wisconsin. Wisconsin coming off the bye. Um, and, the, and, and the Badgers are not, as we've been saying uh, for a few, uh, at a few different times on this program, this is just, it's been a struggle so far. I think there were a lot of people, a lot of fans that thought that they were just going to come out of the gates and they were going to be dangerous and they were going to be lighting it up. Uh, the Longo offense, and it was going to be, and they got Fickle as the coach, and just look out for Wisconsin. And then we mentioned in the beginning of the season that it was going to take some time. And at some point, they were going to start feeling it. They were going to catch up to the offense because they're learning new schemes. They got a new coach, offense and defensive as well. So keep that in mind. Wisconsin... Yes, everybody talks about Longo and the offense, but uh, they switched to a 3-3-5 defense this year. Uh, Leonard is gone. The, the ex-Jet Jim Leonard is gone. And uh, the new coordinator is uh, Mike Tressel. Uh, and so you have new coordinators. you got the new schemes. Uh, it's going to take time. So taking a look right now at Mordecai, he's at 66% with two touchdowns and three interceptions. Thanks, Jonathan, letting us know that we don't play Wagner this year. Next year, uh, PMAT believes it's Akron. And that's definitely better because as we saw what happened last week, Akron took Indiana to, what, five overtimes? So, and I agree with Cinema Man about Shepard needing to be the backup. I mean, unless, see, I don't, this is the problem when you hear coaches talk about certain players and they talk them up. And then you watch them yourself, and you're not, you don't, what are you talking about? I'm not seeing anything different. And this, this is what we're hearing about Simon. Oh, he's looked really good. And I don't believe it. I just don't. I, I just think they're, I don't know what they're doing with Simon. Again, I don't even think Simon is an FBS quarterback, period. Um, and I understand why he stays here. Don't get me wrong. Why would you transfer? I mean, you're one injury away from being a, a starting quarterback uh, for a Big Ten school. But, getting some more talent out there. And I know he's a young kid and I'm not saying that uh, he's going to have, he's going to be, he's taking Gavin Wimsatt's job, but having a kid like Shepard in there, uh, as you guys, as you mentioned, somebody that uh, is physically more athletic and, and, and is almost, I mean, I know he's not completely the same size, of course, but uh, somebody that, is fairly uh, – actually, I, I don't know. Sometimes guys look a little bit bigger 
to me on TV, but he actually looks a little bit bigger than Wimsat. But I know Wimsat uh, actually uh, has put on some pounds uh, this past off season, so I know he's gotten a little bit bigger. But I agree. I think Benjamin would be nice to see him as the number two guy. I don't think that's the case, though. Uh, they're, they're saying that Simon was injured, so that's the reason why Shepard was getting the reps. So we'll see. But getting back to Wisconsin, Mordecai, two touchdowns, three picks. That's not good. That's pretty pathetic. And he's only averaging 219 passing yards a game. That is nowhere near where uh, people thought that that would, uh, that would be his total at this point. Braylon Allen, we know how good he is. Right now he's averaging 70 yards a run. So he's doing exactly what he usually does at this time of year with six touchdowns. They got this other guy, Malusi. That's also pretty good. Uh, he's uh, averaging six a carry and four touchdowns. Uh, Mordecai does have four on the ground, but we, you know, that's all cheap stuff. So uh, for Wisconsin right now, you've got to stop the run. Absolutely stop the run. You're going to put yourself in a really good position to win the football game. Um, right now, they only have three receivers that are over 100 yards. And uh, all three of those guys do have double digits from receptions. Um, but they don't have anybody that really scares you. You know, they're good receivers, but nobody that scares you. There's like not, not like a number one guy where you go, wow, you know, we got to stop this guy. Um, I know uh, the, the, the one kid... Um, last year, I think he was their number one guy. I don't know. I don't tell you the truth. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. If it's Dyke and uh, Dyke was actually honorable mention last year, he had close to 900 yards receiving. So I know he's a quality player, but he's not anybody that I think Rutgers needs to be completely afraid about. But the fact is uh, he is their number one guy. He's averaging over 20 yards of reception. And to tell you the truth, since Max Melton hasn't been covering anybody all that great this year, he is the one guy that we just ha have to make sure that does not uh, come up with the explosive plays. Defensively, keep this in mind, of course, and this is important for Wisconsin. Uh, th they had two guys, two guys that uh, are not with the program this year that graduated. Um, Herbig, and I believe he was drafted by the Steelers, their big pass rusher last year, uh, and Benson. Um the interior defensive lineman, a very good player. I believe did he get drafted in the second round. So he was drafted. Actually, was he also drafted by the Steelers? Were they both drafted by the Steelers? They were. So the Steelers drafted both kids and um, their defense overall. Let's take a look at where Wisconsin is right now on total defense, because defensively they did give up 31 yards in their loss excuse me, 31 points in a loss to Washington State. Obviously, Washington State's uh, a pretty good football team. Uh, but taking a look at Wisconsin, Rutgers right now coming into this game, they were 32nd defensively in the nation, total defense. Uh, Wisconsin usually has a pretty good defense. And uh, let's see, where is Wisconsin's uh, overall defense? Because I'm not seeing them so far, which is a good, which is a good sign for Rutgers. Uh, the, I didn't realize that they were this far down, 80th. Uh, Wisconsin 80th in the country in total defense. Uh, so that's a good sign. And, and, and that's now Purdue. You know, they had a new, they have a new staff, uh, an inexperienced head coach, Georgia Southern, who's actually a pretty good football team. They're, they're one of the best Sunbelt teams uh, right now. Uh, but Wisconsin was outgained by Georgia Southern, gave up 455 yards. Uh, Allen only had 94 yards in that game against Georgia Southern. Washington State, um, they were held to 91 yards rushing by Washington State. Matter of fact, they had three fumbles in the game and had one return for a touchdown, did Wisconsin. That was an ugly game uh, in that uh, loss at Washington State. And Buffalo, they led 14-10 at the half. They ran all over Buffalo with 314 yards on the ground. So if you really think about it, take the 314 yards against Buffalo away, uh, and Wisconsin's rushing attack has not been all that great either. So this is, you know, Iowa, if you, if, you, if you look at the schedule right now for those two road games, you got Rutgers at Wisconsin, and then you got Rutgers at Iowa. You got, because, again, we're not even going to think about Penn State. So if you got those two games, and Iowa, we can see how they are vulnerable. Uh, absolutely vulnerable. So the question is, which game do you have more faith in? 
that Rutgers wins against Iowa or against Wisconsin. And yes, um, good point, Jason, about uh, Wisconsin being homecoming. Uh, because sometimes homecoming can be a positive and a negative. And usually you don't know until the game is over. And then you look at the final score. Uh, because sometimes it could be a distraction, which is why a lot of times they will play the homecoming game against teams that they believe they can beat because of the distraction. Other times, you know, people believe, well, it's homecoming. They're more motivated. Family and friends are around and they want to really play hard and win and so forth. But for the most part, I do believe it's a distraction. And I think they scheduled it with Rutgers for that reason, because they believed, well, it's where Wisconsin, they're Rutgers. So we shouldn't have a problem here. Uh, the one thing that they have going for them is that they had the bye week coming in. So if they start all of a sudden start clicking and then we see a different Wisconsin team by, by the second half of their season, you're going to look at the fact that they had the, the bye week and then, and then that extra week of practice just kind of got things going. Um, and we got to hope that that's not the case because in a way we had a bye week too, uh, but we just played. We had, we, had a heavy, we had a little bit more heated practice. Uh, that just finished about an hour ago. So at least that was that. At least they got homecoming and at least we're, I mean, they're a week off, but at least we had Wagner. So I, I actually think that's better because we come in with a little bit more, you know, we, didn't, we don't have anything, any of the distractions. We, the week off, we're, we're, we're coming in, we're positive. We're, we've got four wins. We need two more football eligibility. And this would be huge. So what do you guys think? Uh, Wisconsin or Iowa? Um, it looks like we have a missed, uh, a mixed reaction in here. Um, PMAT, uh, prefers them against Wisconsin and Jonathan has Iowa. Will has Wisconsin. So yeah, we're, we're all over the place. And then yes, uh, pointed out by Sean about Michigan state, our homecoming the week after that. Now, they're playing against Iowa tonight, and on my college football show, on my YouTube channel, I actually I have double digit upset picks each week. I, I'm like forced to pick them, and I and I enjoy doing it. So I always uh, do fairly well by the time the season's over on on on, on picking double digit upsets because you don't need a whole lot of them. You know, you can have like thirty percent correct when the season's over, and you're making some good money off of it. And I actually have Michigan State tonight. I think it's good for Michigan State to get away. Now I don't even know the game just started. I'm just point is is that I think that they have a, 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 you know their chance to win against Iowa. I think is actually better on the road. Distraction of home and my point though overall is is that if they can actually beat Iowa tonight and Iowa keeps struggling offensively, then that actually believe it or not I think that maybe bodes well for us. Because it's one of those things, they're not getting a coach back. They're going to have the same interim coach the rest of the season. But I think there are some people who think, well, Michigan State just camped it in and they're just not even going to play anymore and their season's over. That's just not the case. That happens for a few weeks, but maybe only a week. But sooner or later, look, a lot of these kids are seniors. Last time they're ever going to play college football for the rest of their lives, football period, the rest of their lives, they're not going to tank it. You know, Sure, it's going to hurt for a week or two. You get all that out of your system. And I believe it's out of their system now, especially now that they're going on the road the next two weeks. And they actually have a, they actually have a pretty decent, talented quarterback. I mean, he's not a veteran, but he's got talent. They've got a pretty talented running game. So we knew Michigan State coming into the season was equal or a little bit better than us already. So... I'm not, I, I think the distraction of having their coach fired is gone, to tell you the truth now. So I'd love to see Michigan State get it out of their system and beat Iowa tonight. Uh, but if they don't, uh, I'm not looking at that game next week as a gimme. Hell no. Because Michigan State is going to want to get a win. They're going to want to get a win for their interim coach. The quicker that interim coach gets a win, the better. That's the way I look at it. So we'll see what happens, but that's a few weeks from now. We still got another week before, actually, because Michigan State, who does Michigan State play next week before they play Rutgers? I don't know if they have a week off. It'd be nice if they did, actually. Not really. Actually, they do. How about that? So Rutgers is playing back-to-back -back teams with buys before they play Rutgers. 
So this is a, a chance for Michigan State to get a win for their interim coach before, the, before they play us on the 14th. So, yeah, I actually think it would be a good thing if Michigan State was able to accomplish that. But anyway, either way, it would be very disappointing if Rutgers did not beat Michigan State the way their season has gone. And then Indiana is the week after that, and you cannot lose to Indiana, period. So how many of you guys think that Rutgers will be bowl eligible by the time they hit their bye on October 28th? I think they I think they have a I think they have a good chance. I'm going to say they have a 65% chance of being bowl eligible before their bye on the 28th. So and they might need it with that last four games. Just get it out of the way. Now of course if you beat Wisconsin, you have pretty much guaranteed that you're going to go bowling. There is no way that Rutgers is going to beat Wisconsin and then not go bowl eligible. They're not going to lose six straight games after beating Wisconsin on the road and then getting off to a five and one start and, and, and showing all of the uh, positive uh, momentum. And then if you beat Wisconsin at Camp Randall, you are not losing a football. You are not winning another. I mean, you're not going to go 0 and 6. So that pretty much would seal it. Um, but. What we just want to see, obviously, is a really good performance next week. Uh, not sure Mike is going to be on with Richie. I know uh, we'll, we'll uh, probably have Richie on for sure next week. And uh, hopefully when we talk next week, we're going to be talking about something pretty big. Uh, because I said this a few weeks ago, going, going to the Michigan game. And they made that at least a, almost a three-quarter game. And I think we said Michigan, Wisconsin, um, and Iowa and Penn State. So those were the four road games. And we said, yeah, Penn State, not, not likely. Michigan, of course, was kind of not likely. We, we, we knew that there was a chance because we played them tough before, but it was not likely. But Wisconsin and Iowa, those are the two realistic chances that, that we had as a program for kind of like a, a kind of breakthrough win uh, for this uh, second go around for Coach Ciano. And I think they're going to do it. I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm not going to say when it's going to happen. I'm not going to make the prediction it's going to happen. But I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to, I, I, again, going bowling and getting six wins is nice and all. But I think they can get seven. I think they get seven with a major win, you know, with a defining program win this season. I think that would be tremendous. Uh, and I think it's going to happen. They're, they're showing enough to me. Uh, and if you just keep the penalties down and the turnovers down like they've been doing, uh, you just keep playing that kind of football. They're extremely well coached. You see, that's the advantage that they have against Michigan State. I Right now, this is probably the one year they're going to have that advantage over Wisconsin because it's an all-new staff. So I think they got the advantage this year on Wisconsin and the coaching staff with the stability of Shiano, even though there's some new coaches. But overall, they have a more stable coaching situation. A much better situation on the sidelines in Michigan State. They're a better coaching uh, team than Indiana. Um, sorry, but besides the head coach, uh, Ferenc, they're a much better coach team than Iowa. Uh, and I still think they're a, a much better coach team than Maryland. It's just that Maryland has a, a, a quarterback that is just a lot better than ours right now. And... Um, but I still think at this point in time, we could beat Maryland. You know, that's uh, we'll, we'll see long way to go before we talk about the Maryland game. But my point is, is that we have a lot of advantages over these teams. We had the advantage over Northwestern with Fitzgerald going down and we took advantage of that. So, you know, if we could just keep taking advantage of the fact that we're a very well coached team, it's showing on the field with the limited turnovers and limited penalties and all of that doesn't look pretty. It's not going to continue to look pretty. Uh, whims at just all he has to do is just make a, a couple of plays here or there with his arm. We know he can make it with his legs. He's proved that already this season. Uh, and these guys, of course, the younger kids that have uh, started to uh, play a little bit more, you know, getting Brown back is huge. Of course, uh, I think he could be a big part of our offense in the second half of the season. I think we're going to need him uh, and, um, and also stay healthy right now. We've been a very healthy football team. So I'll knock on the wood 
uh, stay healthy. If we can do that, we don't have to worry about going, you know, deep into our roster, which is not something we want to do right now, as far as our, re- uh, as far as our rebuilding situation is concerned. So, um, that is pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, it looks like we have, uh, uh, had a lot going on in the chat. So we'll appreciate that. P Matt, I believe he just donated for a second time. So thanks a lot, P Matt. And, uh, just scour. I'm just uh, taking a look overall here because I don't have a partner uh, to uh, look over these, look over this, the comment section while I talk. Yeah, Moses Walker was out today, huh? Okay, yeah. You know, we talked about that last week. Not having, uh, Nick brings that up, not having Moses out there is kind of weird. You know, maybe he's more injured. Now that he's on an injury report, maybe he's more injured than, than we're being told. Cause they don't tell us anything. So, um, even though we haven't needed him, and that's important and he's coming back from an injury. There's no reason to rush the kid. You know, he could have another two or three years here. So, uh, no reason to, 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 to rush him back when our, when our linebacking core is playing pretty good. I will say the one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed about is I think we could be doing, I know we, we hammered, Wagner early on with the sacks, but I think we could do a little bit better job um, of getting to the quarterback, to tell you the truth. Where are we in sacks on the season? Let's see. What are we, middle of the pack? Yeah, middle of the pack for sacks. We have 10 sacks. So I think we could do a, just a little bit better job Um like nobody's really just taken off and that's uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that, but it's early. And I'm saying that because these are the teams you would expect us to pile on the sacks against. It's not going to get easy, easier as you, as you start playing big 10 games. So I think we need that. I really do. I think because the, the, the more pressure that we can get without having to blitz, the better. I know Shannon likes to blitz and not that he's calling the plays on defense, but um, that's his, that's his overall into his normal game plan. But hopefully uh, you know, we can start getting to the quarterback a little bit more and coming up big on sacks uh, and pressures and things of that nature once we start picking things up against these teams. So uh, these other teams, where are we actually? I'm just, uh, now that I'm under the sacks, where are we on sacks allowed? Look at that. We are tied for first in college football with coming into this game. And by the way, didn't we give up a sack? How embarrassing is that? Now that I'm thinking about it, we came into this game against Wagner tied for the lead with allowing just one sack the entire season. And we got sacked by Wagner. That was that sack on the two minute offense. (laughs) Oh my Lord. I didn't even think about that, but that's awesome. One sack coming into the game this year, uh, the game this week. That was pretty cool. Um, and yes, I, I'm glad you uh, brought up Washington about him being done because sorry, but I don't think that matters. He doesn't really bring anything to the table and, and he'll be, and the fact that some of these other guys are going to get better and, uh, and more experienced especially strong. And I think even these two, you know, maybe one or two of these young kids, I got their receptions today. Hopefully they're going to start seeing more playing time. There's always the possibility to bring in a transfer and who knows who's going to be, I don't know who, maybe there's even a freshman receiver that could be in the mix next year. So I I don't think it matters at all. But once again, we had another game where the tight ends weren't uh, a big part of it. Um, it was nice to see the, the, well, we had the one play, but it was called back, right? That was that one play where it was at Bowman had an opportunity to score a touchdown, which was really, uh, it was weird seeing a tight end other than Langan catch the ball, but it is what it is. I'm not going to complain about it. And, um, yeah, so I'm just, uh, once again, let me see if I see, notice anything else here. At the pop up on the comment section before I let you guys go. Uh, next week, anybody know what time the game is next week? I hope it's at, I hope it's at noon. Actually, what do I? T- I don't know when I hope it is to tell you the truth. 
And yes, Bobby Taccio, AJ Serace is on the way. And I know Cinema Man says, relax, he has upside and needs to develop. And he will. Wimsat will be the guy next year. But I tell you what, I'm fully expecting AJ Serace uh, to, 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 be our, to be the dude. To be our dude. He might end up, because I don't know how many, Wimsat is going to play as long as he can here. Because he, he's not going to, he's going to play as, as long as a college career as he can, Gavin Wimsat. So I don't know if, I'd like to see AJ Serace give him a run for his money in 2025. That would be nice. Because that would mean AJ Serace is the real deal. Um, I hope we don't need him. I hope Gavin Wimsat has proved himself by in 2025. That could that could be. I'd love love it to be his last year. Be senior, uh, become a quality quarterback. Leave maybe you get some uh, opportunity to bounce around uh, in NFL camps. But um, I still think that's we're way off on that. Um, he's going to really need to improve a whole lot before we even uh, get to that point. But I do agree. AJ Serace is the man. And I have a lot of confidence that he's going to be a big part of this program's uh, major turnaround because that's what you want to see from your, your quarterback play uh, is it'd be nice to go from like Wimsat to Serace and then even something bigger and better than that. Like maybe you actually get a four star that doesn't need three years to develop. Uh, so, cause I'm tell you the truth. I don't really care about the stars anymore. I think if you get at least a three-star, uh, that's all I care about. It's up to the coaching staff uh, to get the most out of the kid, whether he's a three-star or a four-star. So, all right, guys. So, I appreciate it. Noon, thank you. Noon. All right. I'm all right with it. The only thing about noon is, is that, you know, I, I watch so many college games, and then I wager on games just like these guys, Mike and Richie. So, when you're doing a noon game, you've got all this 330 games coming up. And you got to make sure that before the 12, because, you know, the Rutgers game you're paying attention to, obviously, the most. But then you've got other games at 12 o'clock you're kind of paying attention to. And then you got the 3.30 games that are coming up. And then you put money on those games. So there's a lot going on with the 12 o'clock games when you do a post-game show. Uh, but that's okay. We love doing it. And to tell you the truth, I, I, I'm very shocked that I did 40, 52 minutes of a Wagner post-game show. But it is what it is, and I, I, again, I appreciate you guys being here. I wouldn't have done it without seeing you guys uh, in the comment section. So again, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, share the video. Uh, love to see uh, Rutgers football get the attention that we hope uh, it deserves, especially out there on YouTube. And uh, next week, man, come on, man, next week. Let's 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 jump on this post game show next week as a collective group of fans and and uh, and then get Richie in here and maybe Mike and let's talk about a, a win against uh, Wisconsin. What do you think the line's going to be? I'm going to say I think the line should be or going to be. What's the line's been for Wisconsin so far this year? Let me see. Wisconsin lines so far this year. They were 27 over Buffalo. They were a five-point favorite at Washington State, 20 at home against Georgia Southern, and they were a six-point favorite at Purdue. And I think Rutgers would be considered by Las Vegas on par with Purdue. So I'm going to say, by the way, Wisconsin has covered their last two games. So And Rutgers, by the way, is, of course, still – they have not – this doesn't count FCS. I don't even know what, if, if there, I'm sure there was a line somewhere. I'm not even sure what the Rutgers line against Wagner was, but that doesn't count. So I'm going to say if Wisconsin was a six point favorite at Purdue and they blew them out by 21, I will say that they're going to be favored by, let's see. And then Michigan was favored over uh, us by 24. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say 10, 10. Yeah. 10. What do you guys think? Sean says eight. 
Matt, uh, P. Matt says seven and a half. Yeah, I'm going to say 10. My, I, I believe it should be seven. But I think Vegas does not um, appreciate us. McNamara got hurt, Sean. That's good. Again, hopefully it's temporary. We never want to see anybody hurt for a while. But that's good, considering I have money on Michigan State's money line, and we would like to see Michigan State win, as I said, this week. At least I think it would be a good thing if Michigan State won. Some other people might be like, well, if they win, they're going to, get, they're going to feel confident, and then they're going, to be, they're going to feel a lot better going against us, even though it would be two weeks from now. But by that, by that time with a bye, it's just no. I think it'd be better. They get to win. They get it off their chest. They're not going to be, have that motivation. They're not going to be steaming, you know, for two weeks uh, in the bye and just they, they just can't wait to get out there in the field and win and get the ugly off of them. So I'm, I'm I don't think that's the case. I think every every situation is different. Um, in this situation, I think it'd be better if Michigan State did win. So anyway, if if McNamara is injured, then uh, you know, hopefully that'll uh, help Michigan State out. Okay, so. Um, you know what, Brian? I agree. If Wisconsin's favorite by 10, the money line would be uh, probably 240 or 260. And I would do that. I would do both. I would do 10 and the money line. Because, again, I think seven is the number. And I, and I would think that Rutgers would, would – uh, I think they would be able to even cover the seven, or I think that would be the highest. I could see if Wisconsin beat Rutgers, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it as as more than seven, unless again Wisconsin comes out there, and they're starting to just do something we haven't seen them do much of this year. So, you know, that's the one thing that that works against us, uh, is them working on uh, the off week, with the, with the new coaching staff and everything. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess 10. You guys are going to, seems like we're off uh, by a couple each. I just want to check out, because I didn't give you the information on the Purdue game. Let's see, what did they do against Purdue? Their total yards, they were outgained. How about that? They were outgained by Purdue. Now, Mike brought up last week when I talked about – I forget who I said when we talked about being outgained. Oh, it was the Georgia Southern-Wisconsin game. And, and Mike said, well, that's not that – sometimes it's inflate. You know, sometimes that doesn't – you know, it, 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 it looks like it, it is, but it doesn't really – and I completely agree in a one-game situation. But you look at the total yards over a season. You start developing – because all of a sudden, if you look at Wisconsin and you say, well, wait a second. They've been outgained – by uh, their last two opponents, then yeah, to me, that does start saying something. Now, if by the end of the season, it's two, then that's different. But yeah, they gave up 396, but Purdue had three turnovers in the game. And the game, Wisconsin actually got off to a really quick start in the game. They had a 24 to 3 lead. So that's when the total yards are a little bit misleading. The Georgia Southern game wasn't. That was a close game throughout until late. I could see this being a little bit more misleading. But um, they did have 195 yards on the ground. Most of it was Allen, who had 116 and two touchdowns. So he continued uh, to play well. Look, that's the bottom line. By the way, Mordecai had no touchdowns and a pick last week. So again, the passing game did nothing last week. So you got to stop Braylon Allen. If you can hold Wisconsin to 100 yards, 100 and, you know, 30 yards rushing, somewhere in that range, definitely 150 or less. But Allen, uh, you don't want him going over 100. Uh, if you can do that, you're gonna, we're going to have a really good chance to win a football game. So, all right. Anyway, I'm out of here. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Look, right on the number, basically. One hour, 59 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, again, don't forget to check out my channel, the Prime Sports Network channel. Uh, I'm sure we'll do something on the Chief game or after the Chief game. I've been doing weekly reports on the Jets if you're a Jet fan. Uh, again, college football every Thursday. And then we, uh, we, all, we have other shows. We do a NASCAR show every week if you're into NASCAR. We do horse racing shows if you're into that. Uh, and uh, we also do golf, but not until... 
uh, next season. Uh, and uh, we talked actually about the Ryder Cup this past week. That's not looking real good going into tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk college basketball, too. Can't wait to talk college basketball with Richie this season. And we'll definitely – I'll have Richie on uh, my channel, and, and uh, we'll maybe get together uh, on this channel just like we're doing with the football uh, team. Maybe we can. I don't know. We'll talk about it. But um, it's all up to you guys. The more you guys care about it and, and, and interact with us here – um that, that that gives us the green light to go ahead and do uh all sorts of stuff so anyway appreciate it uh thanks a lot and uh what's uh when we when we see and hear each other again next week come on man let it be a positive let it be positive let it be mega positive what what is what's 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 beat wisconsin at camp randall let's do it baby <laughs>